Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. This video is a part of a previous video that I have uploaded and I'll be showing you all how I study a particular topic and I have taken a small portion from endocrine physiology to explain you all. So let's begin. I have selected a topic called adrenal cortex from the endocrine system and I already have the notes in front of me. Many of you might have already bought it from me from uh, my Instagram page. So adrenal cortex. Adrenal glands are called the life-saving glands or essential endocrine glands. Now before I start with adrenal cortex, first thing that comes to my mind is what is adrenal cortex? And I have this picture of a gland that is present in my mind. So if you all are trying to study a topic and you haven't come across that before or haven't learned about it before, I must suggest you that you should learn the anatomy of it or at least know the basic structure of that particular gland before studying about its physiology. So I'll show it to you right here. As you can see right here, I have just taken the picture of it on Google and found that it is a gland that is situated above the kidney. So I have this structure in my mind before learning about its physiology. Now after having the basic structure of that gland in our mind, Let's look at how we connect these points in an easy manner so that we can retain that information in our mind for a longer time. And one more thing, we have to complete this topic in one hour. So I'm just going to show you how to start with it and then you can continue it on later. First of all, in the notes that I have prepared, I have put certain headings. For example, first comes the parts of the adrenal gland, then the functional histology of the adrenal cortex. Then comes the hormone secreted by the adrenal cortex and then we are going to learn each of those three hormones that are mentioned in it in detail. So how do we connect the basic headings first? Only once you start connecting the headings, you can learn what is inside it later on. So first we have the parts. So when we saw the diagram earlier, the adrenal cortex, the diagram of it, you have to learn about the parts. Then the functional histology which means the histology the structure of the cells which are present in that gland then the hormones that is the contents that are secreted by that particular organ so this is how you simply connect those main headings now let's look at it in detail first point is that adrenal glands are called the life-saving glands or essential endocrine glands now this is the most important point so i have mentioned it as the introductory point that it is a life-saving gland or essential endocrine gland now, let's move on to the first heading that is the parts of the endocrine gland. So firstly, there is the adrenal cortex which is the outer portion of the gland and it constitutes 80% of the gland. Then comes the adrenal medulla which is the central portion of the gland and it constitutes 20% of the gland. So we have covered the main point that is parts. It has two parts, adrenal cortex, adrenal medulla. So that's done. Now moving on to the functional histology of the adrenal cortex as we are going to learn about the cells that are present in it. Adrenal cortex that is the outer layer is composed of three layers of structures that is outer zona glomerulosa, middle zona fasciculata and inner zona reticularis. Now these are the three structures that is a functional histology present in the adrenal cortex. Okay, So when you learn, uh, when you learn about these three new terms that is zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis, you might be wondering how to remember this, right? Just to store it in your mind in a simple information, you must relate it to something really simple. For example, outer zona glomerulosa. So that word itself, glomerulosa, you can relate it to a glow. Then comes fasciculata. So it's like a kind of fascicle or maybe something inner to it. Like after glomerulosa comes fasciculata and then comes zona reticularis. Now you can actually relate that word reticularis to something you have heard that is retina. So you can learn it as zona glomerulosa that is a globe then comes fasciculata and innermost to it comes reticularis. In that simple way you can relate it into your mind. So that's done as a functional histology of adrenal cortex. Then comes the third title that is the hormones secreted by the adrenal cortex. Now the adrenocortical hormones are steroids in nature. You must have come across the word steroids, the, they are also hormones. So these hormones that are secreted by the adrenal cortex are steroids in nature. Hence they are termed as corticosteroids. What are they? They are called corticosteroids. 
Now, based on their function, okay, based on the function of these hormones, these corticosteroids are classified into three types. First is mineralocorticoids, second is glucocorticoids and third is sex hormones. So, it is a bit easy if you try to relate it. Minerals, glucose, glucocorticoids, then comes sex hormones. So, mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and sex hormones. So, in this way, when you relate it, you can remember all these points. So, what all did we know, learn till now? So, I am going to write and show you the important points that we learned right now. What did we learn? We were learning about the adrenal gland and its physiology. So, what is it? Mainly, it is a life-saving gland. That is the main point. Then, comes the structure. Under the structure, we have the outer cortex that constitutes 80 per percent and then the inner medulla that constitutes 20 percent. So, the structure is done. Then comes the functional histology. We learned that there are mainly in the adrenal cortex there are three structures that is the outer zona, glomerulosa, middle zona, fasciculata and inner zona reticularis. So, these are the important points that we studied in functional histology. Coming to the hormones secreted by the adrenal cortex, we learned that they are steroids in nature. Then we learned that it is called corticosteroids. Then we learned the three types. First is mineralocorticoids, then the glucocorticoids and the six hormones. So, after studying and relating it, we have to try writing it down only the important points like this to revise later on after the one hour period is done. Now, after having learned that portion, let us move on to the hormones that is the three hormones. First is mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and sex hormones. So, let us learn about mineralocorticoids. So, first what is mineralocorticoids? That is the first point that we have to cover. Mineralocorticoids are the corticosteroids that act on minerals. Just as the name suggests, it acts on minerals. That is electrolytes, particularly sodium and potassium. So, we have to remember sodium and potassium, Na and K+. Okay? So, mineralocorticoids are the corticosteroids that act on minerals, mainly the sodium and potassium. So, that is the main point, the introductory point. Now, let us move on to what are the two types of mineralocorticoids? First is aldosterone. Second is 11 deoxycorticosterone. Now, what is the common word in both of them? It is sterone. So, first is aldosterone, second is 11 deoxycorticosterone. So, these are the two types. Now, as we have covered what is mineralocorticoids, what are the two types? Now, let us look at the function of mineralocorticoids. 99 percent of mineralocorticoid activity is provided by aldosterone. So, which is the important one? Aldosterone is the important mineralocorticoid that provides the mineralocorticoid activity. So, that is the first point. It is a life saving hormone as it is essential for life and it maintains the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid. Now, you must be knowing about what is extracellular fluid that is a fluid present outside the cells and that is where all these ions are present that is sodium potassium ions. So, aldosterone, what is the function of aldosterone? It maintains the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid. Second is that it is usually called the life saving hormone. Aldosterone is called life saving hormone because its absence causes death within 3 days to 2 weeks. So, this is an example of how I study by preparing short notes and relating the points effectively in order to remember what I learned so that I can refer it later on after I take a break and as well as before sleeping so that the memory of it re is retained for a longer time in my mind. I hope you found this video helpful and do subscribe to my channel to get regular updates on my videos. Thank you.